Hi everyone, it's me Grace. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I have a special guest. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Shams and I am a first year natural sciences student at Geos College, Cambridge, studying physics, maths, chemistry and materials. I'm at Oxford doing chemistry. If you don't know, I'm Grace. I'm a first year um, chemist at Oxford, Lady Margaret Hall. And so when I was choosing, when I was applying, I was like quite conflicted between Cambridge and Oxford. And so I feel like a lot of you guys might be having that same issue. So I wanted to make a video talking about the differences between studying Oxford chemistry and obviously he does chemistry. You want to specialize in physics. Though, yeah, right? but... But you're still doing chemistry exactly, now. Exactly, yeah. So we can still compare. I clearly picked natural science for a reason. And yes, yeah, so I hope this video is really helpful for you guys choosing. Okay, so the first question I want to ask you is what A-levels did you do? I did um, maths for the maths, physics and chemistry. And I did maths, chemistry, and physics. Because the reason why I asked was I feel like, because I didn't do further maths, I feel like that is always one of the reasons why I didn't apply to Cambridge. Because if you guys don't know, I actually wanted to apply to Cambridge, natural sciences. That was always the plan. Cambridge, like, since year nine. And then it was because of the course, like, purely only because of the course that I chose Oxford. So I thought that because I didn't have natural science, I feel like I felt like most physical natural scientists had further maths. And so I thought I'd be disadvantaged. I feel like if you do biological natural sciences, you don't really need it. But what would you say? Would you agree? I would say that you don't need um, further maths mm. because especially there's a lot of people like I have friends that don't have never done integration or differentiation before because they've studied abroad and oh. they just haven't covered it. So you really don't need further maths, but it's of course really nice to have, especially mm. in the first term where you cover a lot of things that you would have covered in further maths. Mm. So that's why it makes it an easier transition for you. Okay, so I, in Cambridge you have like a mm. maths A and a maths yeah. B course. So like, yeah. how does that work? So I'm doing maths A and the difference is just um, maths B, they do a slightly um, longer, they have a slightly longer syllabus. So they do a few more topics and mm -hmm. at the end of the year they can choose between a couple more questions than we can. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not to say that you have to do maths B, for example, if you do further maths. That's a preconception that a lot of people have. Mm. Um, um, and what I've realized <clears throat> is that you should really only do maths B if you find it interesting and you want to do maths for the sake of maths. Mm. Because otherwise, you're just putting more pressure on yourself to get through more content. Is it quicker as well? Like, there's the Yeah, yeah, it goes through content So faster. do you think someone who didn't do further maths could survive the maths B course? Well, maybe. Yeah, mm. it is faster. It's definitely more stre uh, stressful. You can transfer between maths A and maths B relatively easily, especially from um, the first and second term. Between that time, you can change after having tried this. And also, you really don't need maths B for like second and third year. And further maths isn't a requirement, of course, like for the Yeah, no. But maths is. Ma maths, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you have to do maths in the first year. Yeah, yeah. Everyone does maths in mm. the first year. It's like that also as well. So like, you have maths lectures, everyone does maths. I think, I say, like, I think Oxford is actually, like, 50-50 in terms of people who have done further maths and people who haven't. So if you haven't done further maths, like, it's perfectly fine. Like, half yeah. the core hasn't done it, which is why I thought Oxford would be better because I felt like, oh, like, I wouldn't be alone. Um, the maths is all taught. Um, but I will say, like, our maths goes really fast. Especially <laughs> for me because I didn't do further maths. Like, we did, yeah. like, complex numbers, for example. Mm. And obviously you did that. And yeah. like, the further maths kids have done that. But they teach it so quickly. So, yeah, if you haven't done further maths, don't be scared. But also, if you don't like maths, I don't know if I would recommend Oxford Chemistry or Cambridge mm. Math Sciences. Because, to be fair, it's only for the first year that we do yeah. maths. Then, like, for Cambridge, um, mm -hmm. in the second year, you get to specialize down to three subjects and four. So how does it work in the first year? How does it special, like, specialize? Like, I mean, so, like, what do you choose? In the first year, you come in and uh, you don't have to pick before you come in. You come in and then you get to meet with your DOS, which is the director of studies. Mm -hmm. And that is a person who you can go to, who's basically, like, the head of your subject in your college. They can help you discuss um, what kind of subjects you might be interested in and then like you can get some more insight by talking to other years uh, like students from other years and then from all of that information you can then choose what subjects you want to pick mm. um within the first week or so mm -hmm. and then that's when um you get your timetable and all of that 
Yeah. So what options are there for a first year? Physical yeah. nurse science. Physical nurse science. Yeah. Okay. So, so there's, assuming that this person wants to do chemistry, right? So they're thinking, okay, what right, else can yeah. I achieve? There's maths, uh, physics. Which is compulsory. Yeah, yeah maths is compulsory, mm -hmm. but either maths A or B. Mm -hmm. And then there's physics, chemistry, materials, and earth sciences. Okay. As far as I remember, but mm -hmm. in natural sciences, you don't necessarily have to be stuck to just physical. For example, I have a lot of phys friends who do physical Natsuki, but they um they do biology of cells as well. Oh. So like I have friends who do maths, physics, chemistry and biology of cells. Mm. So but they're still physical because they do more physical subjects than they do biological su subjects. Mm. Um so you can't like in um Natsuki there's a lot more diversity in options and so there's the other options you can pick for are like physiology and um evolution. I think that's it. Mm. Yeah, as far as I remember. But don't worry about getting it completely right because people do change in the first couple of weeks after trying it out mm. so yeah yeah and then in the sec in the later years you yeah you specialize further so in the second year you go from four to three but there are subjects like for, for, for example for physics physics is split into two so it's mm. physics a and b and they cover different parts of physics okay and so um yeah you can specialize down and a lot of people for example do chem a can be maths physics a physics A, physics B, maths. Mm. So that's stuff. just like chemistry now, or just yeah. like physics. Yeah, but just or chemistry. you can do other kind of combinations. Like there's a lot more options as you go on through the years, definitely. Mm. But maths isn't compulsory. You don't have to pick maths. No, no. Yeah. So for the Oxford course, you kind of just like stop, um, like having the maths lectures and the maths classes and stuff, and then it's still quite rigid though. Like you do physical chemistry, organic chemistry, and inorganic throughout mm. the whole thing. Oh, and also, like, I feel, because obviously I'm just doing chemistry, but I locally feel like I'm doing a lot. Because we're doing, like, the maths, and then we're doing the chemistry, and then we also have, like, physics as well. Yeah. So we have, like, two physics tutorials a term, right? So last time it was role of charge, which is, like, mm, electrostatics, yeah. like, Coulomb's law and stuff, and classical mechanics. And then this term is properties of gases. Mm. and role of charge again mm. so obviously that is applicable to chemistry so it's not just like straight physics it's not just like physics for the fun of it yeah but it does still feel like i'm doing more than just chemistry like do you know mm. what i mean yeah which i quite like okay so i'm gonna ask you like so you have supervision yes like, not tutorials do you call it tutorials okay supervision is weird are you no, a child not. to be supervised <laughs> like i don't understand you're cheaters because they're cheatering you they're teaching they're your you your supervisors why are they supervising you you have supervision, so how is that like? That's basically like if you don't know, it's like the how many people in your for me it's two, maybe three sometimes. Mm. Yeah. For me, it's three. So since there are six chemists at Anime, it's like mm. just split in half, and so it's like two to three, and you're a cheater, yeah. and then you like supervisor, <laughs> you're a cheater, and then you like um, go through the problem sheet, whatever. So it's very like. Like almost one to one learning, right? Yeah. Um, which is really really good. So how many? So how is obviously for me? It's like we have a certain number of physical cheats and organic and chemistry mm -hmm. and organic mm -hmm. at times. Do you have um, different tutors per? Yeah. Subject? So I have a physical okay. tutor, an organic tutor, okay. organic tutor, and a math tutor, okay. and then we have one math class, um, a week. Yeah. Um. So that's how it's kind of split for us. So like, how is it split for you in terms of? Um. Tutors? So for me. I have uh, four supervisors for each subject, so mm. I have four supervisions a week, um, an hour each. So mm. I have one for physics, one for maths, one for materials, one for chemistry. My tutorials are usually like one and a half hours, sometimes right. two. Oh no, they definitely, like they most of the time they do run over. Yeah. They, so they become an hour and a half, but yeah. they say they're supposed to be an hour. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, so you get a problem sheet, right? Yes, yeah. Do your problem sheets align with your lecture like courses it very much depends on the supervisor, supervisor some people some supervisors find it good for you to like stretch yourself and make and push you into looking into the content ahead of mm. the lectures mm -hmm. so that you can uh, try it out before the lecture lecturer goes over it mm -hmm. but other people just go in line with the lectures mm. yeah so it very much depends and do you think that depends um, college by college because supervisions are oh, college yeah. based right definitely so lectures are uni based right yes um and labs as well and then tutorials are <laughs> college based so it depends on um your college yeah but i think most colleges in oxford do it like they prefer the latter way in the sense that you teach yourself it first mm. and then you have the lectures 
Mm. So, like right now, I'm doing my quantum sheet, but the quantum lectures start in week five. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh. And it's it's rough. It's that actually rough. Sounds very they give rough. you like okay. a reading list. Um, they'll say, Oh, we don't books, have a reading list. These books we recommend to cover oh, no, these okay. topics and then do the questions. We do have reading lists. It's just they just leave it there, but they we, they don't expect us to actually read it. So, yeah, so mm. usually they don't online. And then you get the lecture, and it's supposed to be like consolidation. Mm. But mm. what else should I call Practicals. Oh, yeah. So if you don't know, I have um I have a, I have a video by the way talking a lot about like my course. So I'll link it down below if you want to watch that. I have two labs a week, um eleven to five each week. Okay. So that's twelve hours of labs a week. So that's really like twelve hours. That's a lot of hours. And then we have the lab reports, which take like oh, they take a long time. They take like three to four hours to do. Mm. It depends on the lab, mm. to be honest. So if we say like three hours per per report. That's six hours mm. plus twelve. That's eighteen hours of labs a week. If they just halved that, I would literally uh, have like nine hours freed okay. up. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a lot. The practicals are a lot. To be fair, I like labs. I find them fun. Like in the lab. Like okay, yeah, I get that. It's just mm. the stress that comes with the lab is. Is it? You're stressful. No. Don't you have Mine's a bit partner? different. Mine's a bit different. Okay, how do like, yours work? Like? So, for example, or it depends on the subject very mm. much. Like. Chemistry labs are very different to physics labs, mm. that which are very different to materials labs. Mm. So I can only speak about them three because that's the subjects I do. Mm. But um, for chemistry, I have a similar to you. I have an eleven to six lab, but mm. I have an hour long lunch break in the middle. Okay. So same six hours basically. Yeah, f chemistry they are similar length, but my uh, chemistry labs are once a fortnight, mm. so once every two weeks, mm -hmm. and um, they're on alter alternating weeks with. Physics, so on. I have physics on like odd Fridays, for example, and chemistry on even Fridays. Okay. And that's how it works. And physics is um, slightly shorter. It's like two to five forty-five, I think. So okay. it is shorter. Mm. Um, but with chemistry, your we don't do a proper proper write up like you do. Mm. We have like we have to write uh, write stuff up to some extent. Like we have to do a protocol. We do it in the lab. Though. But we have to do it in the lab yeah. and we have to do finish all of it, everything in the lab. So like and whatever is incomplete you. is just incomplete. You just have to leave it be. Mm. So that's a good and a bad thing because of course it's good to just get it out of the way and you have you don't have to stress about it afterwards. Mm. But also it's not a great thing because then you have to stress about finishing all in the lab. That's mm. why I said it was like kind of stressful. Mm. Um, but but on the other hand, materials, you don't have to do everything in the lab because the lab is only from, for me, it's only from 1.45 to 3.15. Okay. So it's only like an hour and a half. Yeah. So you just get that lab done and then you have like questions and stuff that you have to answer that you can answer right before or right after the lab, like within a day mm. around the lab. And uh, that makes it more manageable, of course. Yeah. And those, ha however, happen every week because they're shorter. Also for maths, technically I have a lab in the sense that I have scientific computing practicals, mm -hmm. which is where they make us um, do some coding. And yeah, it's, oh, it's over Zoom, so it's okay, fine. Okay. And Wait, what about physics labs? Do you have question write-ups? Yeah, oh yeah, physics labs, um, again, you have to do like, uh, you have to answer questions and whatnot in the lab, mm -hmm. all self-contained. However, mm -hmm. with physics, every term, you have to, at the end of the term, you have to do this like proper write-up, proper mm -hmm. report. I guess it's preparing you to be able to write like scientific literature in the future. But yeah, so if you wanna do a lot of chem, if you really like chemistry practicals, then I would mm -hmm. say you do a lot. <laughs> so there's also the um, entrance requirement. So yes, last and, year, yeah. you have your NSAA. Yes. National Sciences Admissions Assessment. assessment. Chemistry at, at my at this moment in time, there is no test for chemistry. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. So that low key. Because I was like, also chemistry no test. Um, but I feel like it puts more emphasis on the interview because yeah. you have nothing backing you yeah. up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's that. If you want to, mm. but I don't know if it will change. They might introduce an right, assessment, but yeah. as of right now, there's no yeah. test. So there's also that to bear in yeah. mind. But how was the NSA? The NSA, the NSA was. Um, Difficult. It's definitely very time pressured, pressured yeah. because then you have a lot of. They're all just MCQs, multiple yeah. choice questions. It's very time pressured, so you have to get through a lot of questions, and they're actually difficult. They're not oh no! Like no. Okay, the first section is not. Yeah. But like you have to do them in like a minute. Yeah, the that's, first section. I but think then, that's what makes it hard. Is the fact that you have to think so quick. But then the second section, they they're like in A level. They're like six, twelve. Like they're like twelve markers that you have to do in like six no three minutes four minutes oh, yeah. so they're they are a lot more difficult mm. and 
um, that's why it's, it is stressful. But mm. um, the I didn't well, I didn't want to do the physics aptitude test mm. in Oxford because that's like renowned to that be is, difficult. Oh, also, in Cambridge, they just get a lot more people through into the interviews mm. than Oxford because mm. Oxford they cut off a lot more people yeah. right at the start after the exam. So yeah, so there's that as well. So there is an entrance yeah. assessment um to consider. Um, but I feel like Cambridge, yeah, they, they accept more people. So even if you didn't do that well, you, you I might don't still, hear it. I don't want to hear it. You might still have a chance oh, at okay. interview, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Oh no, into the interview, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and like, then you they interview most yourself. people. Like, I think I've, I heard the statistic that they interview like 70% yeah. of people. But then like, that means that they cut. They cut a lot that. of people when they give offers. Yeah. yeah. So there's that. So the test, like, I feel like if, if you're applying. Well, let's say Oxford has a test in the future mm. and you're watching this video. Mm. Oxford are more strict with their tests, so they have a cut off mm. that like anyone under this in the bin. Yeah. Cambridge <laughs> will interview a lot, giving false hope, but it doesn't mean that you have a chance to redeem yourself if you do yeah. do that well yeah, exactly. in the test. So there's yeah. that to consider. So I so I I chose Oxford Chemistry because one, I thought like, oh, everyone's gonna do further maths. I didn't do further maths. Two I don't think I wanted to do material. I didn't want to do earth as well. So yeah. I was actually just like, mm. you could have done one of the biology. biology I didn't even do A level biology. My friends who do biology, they yeah, haven't done yeah. biology. Yeah, no, I just yeah. thought, nah. I just thought, do you know what? Let me just do straight chemistry. And I'm enjoying it. Like I said, there is a bit of variation in it. So I feel like if you're a bit unsure of what you want to do, or if you just like science, like you like different sciences, mm. The Natsuki is really good because mm. um, obviously you do broad and mm. you learn different skills and you learn how they link together and all this kind of stuff. Mm. Um, if you're 100% sure you want to do chemistry mm. or I feel like because obviously it makes sense that the chemistry course like is more in depth because yeah. obviously you do more you work, chemistry, you do yeah. chemistry, right? So that's really good. So if you want to go, <laughs> then there's that. Yeah, but obviously like yeah. they're both pretty high standards um, in terms of learning because there's Oxford. Okay, so thank you so much for watching, guys. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to my channel. Also, leave any questions down below for me or Shams. If there's a question for Shams, I'll pass it on to Shams and you'll get the answer. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! Bye-bye!